Good afternoon and welcome to the last lecture of the module, lecture 11 about data source design patterns. Last week we looked at a few design patterns and this week we're going to continue that theme but focus particularly upon those design patterns that apply to that uh, interaction between object-oriented systems and relational databases. And we're going to look at three patterns in particular, table data gateway, row data gateway, and active record. And the problem can be stated in this way, that we, what we have is an object-oriented program that needs to interact with a relational database. And the two paradigms just don't naturally mix. So um, what we have thus far is SQL embedded into the servlets in our internet applications. And this can make maintenance a bit awkward, um, never mind the, the fact that we've, we've got to try and work out some way of getting the relational information into objects on an object-oriented structure. Um, so there are a few other problems that are mentioned there. Um, but even if we were to do like we have uh, seen in, in the previous lecture and put all the SQL statements into one interface, um, that doesn't really remove the problem of complete lack of object-oriented structure. And so we're going to look at three patterns that might address this problem. The table data gateway is essentially uh, just a, a, a wrapper class that allows us to um, provide some uh, interface methods so that we can interact with the database. And it's called a table data gateway because the class will focus on one table in the database. And uh, that class will have an update method, an insert method, a delete method, and then a series of find methods that will allow us to uh, query the database. This class will hold all the SQL that's necessary for accessing that single table and uh, what we'll typically find in an application is that there will be one of these gateway uh, classes per table. So if you've got five tables in your database you'll have five different table data gateway classes. And uh, all the other classes in your application will then make use of the methods in this class, in, in this type of class, to interact with the database. So they no longer are interacting directly with the database. They do it via the gateway classes. And so what that is doing then is separating the concerns, separating database interaction from the rest of the application so that the application can focus on the object-oriented uh, way of dealing with data and so on. And that uh, sort of, there's now an interface, a, a buffer between the object-oriented application and the relational database. So what we've got to do is then think, well, if, if these find methods are going to query the database, they're going to extract data. How is that data then going to be presented to the rest of the application? And there's uh, several ways of doing it. For example, we could use a record set pattern, which is a, a standard uh, design pattern, which essentially represents query results as rows of, of data. In other words, the result set object that we've been using up till now is essentially an implementation of the record set pattern. Alternatively, we could use what's known as data transfer objects, DTOs, uh, which is another kind of pattern which wraps up data that is logically grouped, uh, so for example, row data, uh, in one particular object. So if you have a result set from your query that gives you four rows, then you would generate four instances of the data transfer object. And again, this is very similar to what we've been doing thus far in the internet applications. Um, we've been querying the database, getting the result set object, and then uh, for each of the rows, we've built uh, what we've been calling the beans, but they're essentially data transfer objects that have been used then to pass the data from the model 
over to the view. And it's the beam that has been transferring that data. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you uh, an application, an example, where the table data gateway has been used. And what I've done here is uh, split up using packages the various parts of the, the system. We've got the, the model components. Those are servlets that are buried away in this package. Um, we've got the control, which is in the commands in here. The data transfer objects are in the beans. And uh, the bit we're going to look at first is the table gateway. And uh, let's take a look at the department. If we were going to query a, uh, the standard introductory Oracle database, where you've got the debt table and the emp table, and you wanted to extract the information from these tables, then you wouldn't use a table data gateway. So if we look at the one for the department table, what I've got here is a concept you've now seen before, where we have a static, that is class level variables, or actually they're constants, they're finals, uh, of type string, which uh, embodies the SQL statements that are going to be used by this class in the interaction with the database. You can see here that we've got um, uh, just a select everything from the depth table and order it by D name. Uh, so no parameterization there. Uh, here we've got some parameterization because we want to select the, the department by ID. So we're going to identify which department number we want to extract from the, uh, the database and so on. We've also got a couple of variables for the database username and password which come from, well, whoever creates the object. They have to provide as parameters the username and password for uh, this database. Then we have the find methods. Here we have find all. Well, find all is going to make use of the all departments SQL statement. Select star from debt order by D name. And uh, what it will do is uh, connect to the database, as we've seen before. Now, what I want to show you here, because uh, some of you have been uh, a bit confused about how to use a prepared statement properly. And uh, the, uh, so what I've done is, is modified this example. It's not actually yet on Blackboard. But uh, um, for now, what I've done is modify this so that it doesn't use prepared statements if there are no parameters to be done. So we're going to create a statement and then execute a query because the string in all departments is simply select star from depth order by D name. There's no parameterization going on. So we don't use a prepared statement. There's no need to. Um, so we create a statement, execute a query using that string and then process it as usual, while next, rs.next, we're going to do some processing. And that processing is, in this example, call a method called create department, passing in the result set object. And then it will return um, an object of the department record type. Now, department record is a data transfer object. Um, and I'll, come and I'll talk a bit more about that in a few moments. In the next find method, this is find by ID, which takes as a parameter the ID of the department. So this is essentially the, uh, uh, the, the, the number of the department. Now this is different because if we scroll back up to the top, depth by ID is parameterized. Select star from depth where depth no equals and then the question mark. That question mark is a placeholder for uh, a parameter. So in the find by ID method, when we have connected to the database, we're going to set up a prepared statement because we can parameterize prepared statements. 
And when we, from the connection call, prepare statement, we pass in that string. This is the string with the question mark in it, the placeholder for the parameter. And having created that st prepared statement, we then can call from the statement the set int method, saying that the first placeholder, well, there's only one here, but we still have to say which one it is, the first question mark is going to be replaced by the value held in the variable id. And then we call execute query. Now, that is essentially the distinction between using an ordinary statement and using a prepared statement. The ordinary statement doesn't have any placeholders. The prepared statement does. Um, and thereafter, we just process the result set as we would uh, in any other situation. Again, what we're going to do is to create, uh, call the create department method passing in the result set. Um, and then we do similar things with find by name. In this method, the insert method, we have a, an array list of department records. Remember, this is a set of data transfer objects that just holds data that we now want inserted into the database. And what we would put here is some code that would have all the SQL necessary to take the data from the array list, construct some rows, essentially, and insert them. Um, the reason I've not put that code in there will become apparent when you read the tutorial worksheet. Likewise with update. Now this method that I have mentioned a couple of times, create department, that takes the result set as its parameter. And it's going to create a new instance of department record. And if we take a quick look at what department record is, it is what we've been calling up till now, beans. Um, so it's a data transfer object that has the necessary uh, properties that will match the columns in the database table uh, that are given default values when the object is constructed and then by calling the set methods we can change those values and by calling the get methods we can obtain those values. And uh, therefore what we're going to do in create department in this example is from the result set get the data and from the current row and store it in the data transfer object by calling the appropriate set methods. And then that um, variable, D, which is the department record, will be returned at the end. And having been returned to, let's say, find by name or uh, find by ID, it doesn't really matter which, but uh, or even the find all. Having created the object, it's then stored in our reference here and right down here at the end um, it is returned. So this uh, find by ID returns a single department record, in other words a single row, whereas find all is going to uh, return an array list of those data transfer objects. So if that's the table gateway, we now have to consider how it's used. So we've set it up here. Um, what we've got to do next is to think about where and when it's going to be used. Well, this is to do with database interaction. Therefore, that's part of the model in our MVC architecture. So in the servlets.model uh, package, if we get all locations, then the first thing that this uh, servlet does is to obtain from the request, uh, sorry, the session scope, the attributes, username and password. These are the database username and password. And then it creates a new instance of the department table gateway class, passing in username and password. That gives us then this variable depth table, which is our gateway. And then we can call find all from that uh, gateway object. And the find all method, if you remember, returns an array list of department record objects, which can then be stored 
in a variable. And then we can process that variable in a for loop, for example, to set up, um, well, whatever we want to do. Now, in this case, what we're doing is creating another data transfer object called location, which is then used as the beans uh, for uh, the view. Okay, so there might be a little bit of overkill here, but I just really wanted to show, for reasons that might become apparent later on, uh, the separation, a very clear separation between transferring data from the database to the application, the model, and for another data transfer object, for transferring data from the model to the view component within the architecture. Now, of course, this is just causing our number of classes to grow rather rapidly. If I expand all of these, you can see that we've got rather a lot of classes now to do something that is actually fairly simple. <coughs> but as I mentioned last uh, time in the, la in the previous lecture, that isn't necessarily a problem because it means that everything is very well structured, which makes it easy to find your way around the, the application because we're using these patterns. Not only does it make it very structured, but each file here, each class, has a very specific job to do. And therefore, it only has to focus on one thing. So in many ways, it makes the programming easier. It certainly makes the maintenance and debugging easier. So that's the uh, table data gateway example. The road data gateway is very similar, except that instead of having one of these gateway objects per table, we've got one per row within a table. <coughs> and uh, therefore, essentially what happens is that each database column becomes a field in the object, and this class will contain the insert, update, and delete methods, each of which will have their own SQL statements for interacting with the database. So what we can do now is create one of these objects, put in the data that we want, and then call the insert method or the update method, and that method will uh, change the database in the way intended. And typically, with the row data gateway, we'll find we have the find methods held in a separate finder class. And so typically, there will be one of these objects per table row. So if you've got uh, a table with four rows, then we'll end up with four of these objects, potentially, within the application. And if, as well as that, you've got a second table with six rows, then you'll have an additional six objects. So we interact with these, uh, all of these objects within the system. Now, of course, that means that we might end up with quite a lot of objects. Uh, we would then have to think about, well, if I've got a, a huge application, is this perhaps not appropriate as, a, as a, a pattern to use? Let's see how it would work. Here we have a servlet and a database. The servlet needs to talk to the database. So what it does is first create um, an employee finder object and then call the find method, passing as a parameter the ID of the employee that is to be found, in this case, in this example, two. The find method will then interact with the database, calling, using the proper SQL, uh, select star from emp where emp no equals two, probably. And will then get in return a result set. That find method will then um, create for each row within the result set an employee row object and that row is then, or that object is then returned to the servlet. So let's have a look at another example, the row data gateway example. Um, again, we're using the command pattern here, so we've got all the commands in that package. Here we have the row gateway. So this time, for a department, the department row has the columns and 
we've got the database username and password in there, which are being stored. Um, you'll notice that this, extend, this class extends database utility. The database utility class has basically got the uh, database connection and disconnection uh, software in there. You can look at those in, in your own time. Because this is related to an individual row, then we can have get and set methods for each of these columns. In addition to that, there will be insert, update, and if necessary, delete methods within uh, this object. And therefore, the insert method, or the insert, delete, and update methods will only operate on that one row within the table. The department finder is the class that has got all the find methods. So what we were looking at previously in the uh, table gateway has been split now for the row. All the bits that deal with just the row have gone into the, the row, the department row class. And the find methods have all gone into the department finder uh, class. So you'll recognize the strings for the SQL statements, and the find all method, the find by ID, find by name, and create department. So it's the same as what it was before. It's just been packaged differently, really. Um, but other than that, it's going to work in a very similar way to what we looked at previously. So I won't spend too much more time on that example because it's very similar to what we had before. Now the active record is uh, another step towards object orientation really because the active record is essentially a, a combination of the row data gateway pattern with domain logic mixed in. So we're, we're uh, bringing together the object orientation, which is the domain logic, with the functionality of interacting with the, the database. So again, what we have is within the active record object, we'll have properties for each database column. We'll have the insert, update, and delete methods as before. And in this example, we could have had a separate finder class, but in this example, what I've done is put all the find methods as static methods within this class. And what we're also able to do then is to build in some of the domain logic, things like the business rules and validation and so on. Because if we're going to insert, then we really ought to do some validation of the values to make sure that, that what we're inserting meets the business rules. Or likewise with update and so on. And typically there'll be one of these active record objects per table row. Um, before we come and, and uh, well, no, let's, let's talk about this now. By using the active record objects throughout the system, if we use, we could potentially use those as the data transfer objects because they already hold all the data for a given row, and we could just pass that over to a servlet. Uh, not just the model servlet, but that model servlet could then pass it on to the view servlet. And what we really need to ask ourselves is, is that a good thing? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Because what's happening, really, is that we are now um, making the database design much more closely coupled with object design. Well, is that a good thing or a bad thing? In a sense, that, that isn't so bad in my opinion. That's not a big problem. But the first one of using these active records as data transfer objects, that in my opinion is not a good thing. Because what it would do, for example, is you get the model that um, calls this active record, which populates itself, and then the model will pass the active record over to the view. And all of a sudden, that gives the view the option of updating the database. But view components don't change the database. That's the role for a model component. So in terms of being purist, 
which I like to be, then um, it's not a good thing to use active record objects as data transfer objects. And so in the example that I'm about to show you, we're not going to do that. We're going to have uh, data transfer objects separate from the uh, active record objects. Um, actually, having said that, I'm not sure we do. Let's take a quick look in here. Get all locations. That's the one we were looking at before. Um, so it simply calls from the department active record, find all. Now, the department active record is this class here, which has got the SQL. And now, I've actually done this very slightly differently from the previous two examples, because uh, there's the select all, select star from depth, and then I've got the various clauses as separate strings. So by ID is where depth no equals question mark, by name is where dname equals question mark, and then the order by clause is a separate string. That means I can then mix and match, you see, and I, I don't have quite so many uh, definitions here. Um, so for example, if I'm going to prepare this statement, select all um, order by dname, then I just combine those two strings. If I want to find by ID, then select all plus the where clause for IDs, and so on. Um, so the find methods work in the same way as before, except for that little thing I've just mentioned, and call create department and so on. Now, let's see what create department does. Well, create department creates an instance of the department active record. So these are creating objects. Don't forget the, the methods, the find methods and this create department method. These are static, they're class level methods. Um, and what they're now doing is creating objects of the department active record class. And those objects that are created will have those properties along with the um, the necessary methods for setting and getting. So here we have the get, the set methods, and also the methods for inserting and updating and deleting. <coughs> now, once the servlet has got that, it's receiving in return from find all. Let's just double check to see what find all does it returns an array list of these active record objects. That's then stored as a bean in the location, called location list, on the request scope. So that will be the end of the model. And what the model has done is actually use that active record to transfer the data. So let's take a look then. Uh, the view better look at the, uh, actually it'll be in the commands, won't it? Um, all locations. Having called the get all locations, it then gets the location list attribute. If it's null, we've got a problem. Otherwise, we're returning as the view name, view all locations JSP. So view all locations JSP will then get from the request scope, the attribute location list, and we'll then process it by calling the get methods. Now, or okay, we've used this as a data transfer object and it works, but we've now got the possibility, if we really, really wanted to, of doing something really rather naughty. Let me just show you, instead of get name, we could call the insert method. A view component should never be inserting or in any way interacting directly with the database. So that's not really a good thing. So although the example shows that you can do it, um, in my opinion, it really ought not to. It comes back to this question here. Is it a good or a bad thing? Well, it could be considered a good thing 
if you're interested in not proliferating, <laughs> multiplying your number of classes. It could be a good thing if you decide that you want to uh, keep all the functionality related to this object in one place. But in my mind, and as I said earlier, I'm a bit of a purist in this thing. Um, in my mind, if you're going to have database interaction, that belongs to the model component and should sit squarely only within the model area. And the view should not even have the option of uh, interacting with the database. Additionally, what you could do, because we saw this a few weeks ago, we could write ourselves um, a Java standalone application that serves as a client to this internet application. What are you going to do then? Are you going to allow the client, which might be somewhere in, I don't know, the other side of the world somewhere, have the option of interacting with your database because you're passing a data, as a data transfer object, you're passing an active record. That really doesn't make sense in, in any way, shape or form in my mind. And therefore, uh, if you're not going to do it with a client, then, well, why are you wanting to do it with uh, allowing views to interact with your database? So it's really just a question of just how much tolerance you're, uh, you're going to give in this, uh, uh, in this question. But it's up to you, of course. You, you make your own decisions and, and make your own view, uh, mind up on those things. So there we have, then, the three... Uh, design patterns for interacting with databases, the table gateway, sorry, table data gateway, the row data gateway, and the active record. Enjoy playing with them all in the tutorial. Good luck. <laughs>